Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. By this time next week, which is next Friday, October 1st, 2021, prominent Nigerians will be coming together to basically flag a mega party, which is going to be like a third force in the country. The prominent Nigerians we're talking about include former INEC chairman Atahiru Jega and political economist Pat Utomi. Um, let's now invite our guest to talk more about this. He is the former special uh, advisor, Ikunabo in Kotaria. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right. Um, let's talk about this planned political party. Is this what we need and is the timing right? Well, uh, if it's about what we need, I mean, when political engines are revved up, especially at this time, this period of the year, of the political year, you expect um, such, I call them, vagaries and vicissitudes of politicians and uh, political parties. People will want to form political parties for different reasons. Uh, one, they might want to form the political party believing they can um, hew out the stone of hope from a mountain of despair, as Nigerians are right now. Uh, so secondly, they believe that they don't have the chances in other political parties like the APC and the PDP. So the best thing is to uh, come up with the political party with which uh, they are going to launch the ambitions. You know, uh, we've had this talk of salvation. I mean, it, it awakens reminiscence of the military area. When one military government uh, plots a coup, which in most cases the coup is egocentric, they plot a coup, and the excuse they give is that the previous military administration that had just announced uh, wanted to plunge the nation into anarchy, both political and financial, and so they are the redeemers. We also saw a situation with the APC where it propagandized that it was uh, the redemption party. And today we are all witnesses to the fact that it's worse than the PDP that it took over power for. So for so many, for political reasons, I mean, people from this political party, but the fact is, you ask the question, is it right? If you say, is it right? It is in sync with our constitutional provisions, freedom of association, so, and it's the discretion of those who are going to form the party, to form the party, and when they do fit. If they believe that this is the right time, well, so be it for them. But my worry, actually, is will they be able, will the new political party be able to wrestle power from the APC? That is the next question. Because when you talk of um, trying to house a power, a, go, a political party in power, you must have be, go beyond credibility to financial strength. Do they have the financial strength, that financial muscle? Especially when you consider the fact that Nigerians are impoverished, Nigerians are hungry, and in the next coming election, gastric considerations, Nigerians will think of those that will give them money, those that will address their immediate welfare. Because, you see, Nigerians no longer believe in our politicians. They are tired of the high blood pressure of the certain veterans. South history is no longer uh, a thing of interest to Nigerians anymore because most times you come and make all the flowery statements, rhapsodize, take this and that, and at the end of the day, you don't bring to fruition your promises. You remember your promises once you're in office. So Nigerians believe that what I get now is my own. Forget about these politicians. There is lack of trust. And so will the Jigas and the Utomis and Co be able to convince Nigerians to vote for them? Because you're not just talking of the elites. You're not just talking of the educated class. The class that can descend. They're not just talking of, they, they form just a microscopic view. Majority of Nigerians that will go and cast their vote, if the votes will count, we are they ready to listen to those flowery statements and promises? That is the best question. So if you ask me, well, is it time for them to form the political party, everybody has the right to form a political party when it's so strict, or when it's in strict, especially if it's in consonant, in agreement, with the provisions of our constitution. They have the right to form the political party. But will 
will that political party be the redemption vehicle? That is the question. Will right. it be allowed to even see the light of... No, not the light. Will it be allowed to even um, form a government? That is another question. Right. So Mr. Are the to go um, so it's not, you know, like you mentioned, it's not the first time that we're hearing of something like this. Um, in 2019, uh, the build-up to 2019 elections, there was, of course, the third force. Uh, there were the obvious Equestiles and, you know, um, Faladuru Toys and, you know, whatever, that movement that they tried to start up then, which obviously fell apart, you know, just before the elections. Um, but I, I want you to, you know, share with me why you think, or if you think, that this might also be a waste of time and why this might be entirely impossible to pull off if they truly are the, you know trying to you know kick the apc and the pdp out of power in 2023 what are the reasons why this might just be wishful thinking uh, i will not dismiss it completely as wishful thinking because uh, if you look at the cpc cpc and the acm were able to out the pdp until the various parties melded into one to form the APC. Yeah, you cannot completely rule that out. You might have some disgruntled party members like in the PDP, in the APC, especially when they consider the inclusion in these two political parties. In fact, in the case of the PDP and explosion in these two political parties, some might see this thought force as um, uh, a circle, an avenue, to vent, ventilate their uh, political um, whatever they have, maybe thoughts or political uh, activity. But having said that, so you don't just dismiss it completely. You can't dismiss it. And I don't think those that are forming the party, the Chigas and the Utomi, believe that they can do whatever, achieve whatever they want to achieve on their own steam. I don't think so. I think they are also depending on agree political parties from APC and PDP and maybe all these other smaller political parties. I think that is what they are banking on because it will be banking on the sticky wicket to think that you can just win an election based on your credibility. Nobody is interested in that. Even if people are interested in that, you, you, it's not going to be possible because you don't have a financial muscle. You see, credibility is good, but in Nigerian politics today, finance, is key. You don't go and talk to somebody that is hungry, that don't worry. When I get into office, ask your son to stay back. When I get into office, he's going to continue with his education. <laughs> I mean, you're just talking to very straight. Oh, don't worry. Uh, even if your wife dies in the hospital today and you cannot afford it, by the time I get into office, I'm going to ensure I, we are going to uh, uh, resuscitate our health uh, sector. What are you talking about? The man is talking of now and not the future. And Nigerians no longer believe in politicians who are futuristic. Because politicians have dis uh, uh, disappointed a lot of Nigerians. So that confidence is no longer there. So that is what it might be the brain. That might be the problem. Because if you talk about credibility, of course they have the credibility. But what of the clout? And when you talk about the clout, you are talking of money in politics. That is, that is money. So look, you might be highly respected in the society. Look at Ghani film. With all the respect, the reverence, and so on, he didn't win. Yeah, but and he didn't win for three reasons. One, he didn't have the cloud. No, that is the truth. The common has that number two, the system. But I believe with INEC, if you talk of the system, with the um, renovations, the, uh, what are the innovations going on in INEC right now, I strongly believe that the issue of the system might not play a major role, especially if the electronic transmission is being done. It might not really play a major role. But it is very easy for Nigerians to be whittled into whatever, provided you have the money. And I believe that these persons don't have that money. Okay. So Mo money for what exactly? Please, please clarify exactly what m the money is for. Money, <laughs> let me say unequivocally, money to buy goods. Are you that saying that right elections right elections cannot be one fair and square in the country and that they need to be influence of money politics for any politician to win in Nigeria? Before, before, before now, 
elect a free and fair election after the uh, 1993 election. Free and fair election is a fleeting illusion. I can tell you that. From after the uh, 1999 to date, they've always bought votes, they've always read the elections, up to the 2019 election. So if you talk of free and fair election, it's an illusion, it's a mirage in this country. But we are hoping that given the uh, innovations of, the, of INEC, that we might have, and that's why INEC is insisting, and that's why Nigerians are insisting on the electronic transmission of results. But those that read elections are averse to it because they know that once the results are trans transmitted electronically, definitely they are going to lose. Okay, Ma Mr. Inkotaria. Are you, are you, Mr. Ingotaria, we'll come, we'll come in detail, we'll come back in detail to the electronic transmission of results, but still about your stance regarding buying election, election votes and all of that. I have witnessed that, um, you know, in person while covering elections in the country, but are you saying that Nigeria, like, that it's unlikely for Nigerians to look at the political credibility and the relevance and the leverage of people like Jaga, like Donald Duke, like Pat Otomi and the rest? and say they want to put their money there. And by money there, like they want to put their money where their mouth is and vote for the people that, that this Rescue Nigeria party is putting forward. Are you saying that's unlikely? What is the Nigerians? Are you, are you talking of uh, the money bags? Then, uh, are, you, are you talking about the high for law and the Jacob the Nazis? When you say Nigerians, are you talking I think about she's referring to the electorate. Nigerians who vote. I made reference to money bags, and I said, uh, when you talk of money bags, you're talking about the microscopic few. And I said, a lot of them will probably depend from the APC and the PDP to this party, to this other new party. A lot of them that feel agreed and believe that uh, their ambitions might be start to fight in this other political party. No doubt about that. But when you talk of the masses, the masses don't believe in credibility. That's what I'm telling you right now. Mm. They don't believe in credibility. Because over the years, credibility has got nothing. Look at Buhari, for example. A lot of, a lot of, look, APC did not win the election. Because Buhari that won that election, so to speak, in 2015. I'm not talking about the convention of 2019. It was the credibility of Buhari. But when he got into office, a lot of people realized that even while he was a military dictator, it was it had nothing to do the credibility that regime had had nothing to do with Buhari, but had to do with Diago. So Nigerians are sick and tired of credit. They will tell you, given the opportunity, you go in there to eat. Forget the sophistry. Once you're given that opportunity, they will forget us. But they doesn't it seem politics. doesn't it seem that you think so they lowly, Mr. Inkotaria. Mr. Inkotaria, just yeah. a minute. Doesn't it seem that you think so lowly of Nigerians to say that they will not vote for people who have integrity, but will only vote for people who are willing to put money in their hands? I mean, there are lots of Nigerians who will argue otherwise and say, no, that's not really I, what they're I, about. I don't, in, I, I don't intend to demean or disparage Nigerians. I don't intend to show good. But I'm only stating the obvious. And uh, it is better to tell ourselves the truth and not to embellish facts. I'm only stating the order. I can tell you now that if you have, that's why I said those that will vote for credibility are quite few. Don't forget I said that. I said they are quite few, but we are looking at majority. And given the pecuniary state of Nigeria, let me ask you a simple question. You have a man that has, and having been disappointed several times. Now, somebody tells you, my dear, vote for me. Once I get in there, I will ensure that your salary is increased. This is one promise that has been made by 20 other persons in the past, and the salaries were never increased. And somebody comes to you to tell you, my dear, that one is talking about salary increase. Won't you eat today? Meanwhile, you are dead hungry. You we'll just collect the money and vote for that human being. But if we create an awareness, you remember on this same station the last time I said, I will urge Nigeria, if we really need a change, I will urge Nigerians to collect this money and vote their conscience. Hmm. But in the past, it has not been the case. In the past, they collect the money and they vote accordingly. But if they will collect this money and vote their conscience, they will not start having the change that we are talking about. All right. hmm. So Ms. all we need to do in that respect is awareness. It's creating awareness. That's all we need to do.
Because the vote is going to be secret. Casting is going to be secret. All right, so Mr. Ingo, Mr. Ingo Tari, you collect this money, but cast, cast, uh, vote your conscience here. Yeah. yeah. Um, some other, you know, aspect of all of this is, you know, looking at our leadership um, um, selection process, uh, the whole process from the start to finish, you know, of putting people in power. And, and I'm talking mostly of INEC. Um, and, and of course, also looking at how a lot of Nigerians also consider religion, consider tribe. Um, if you follow the conversations from the two major political parties, they've been talking about whether to put, uh, you know, a northern candidate or a southern can candidate for 2023. These, you know, are still very important details with Nigeria's elections in 2021, sadly. Yeah. Um, the new political party, you know, very likely, I'm not sure if you think that they would, may also want to be considering some of these things, you know, as they build towards the elections in 2023. Um, but do you think that might be a, one of their stumbling blocks? The fact that we've not been able to develop our leadership selection process to think beyond tribe and religion and, um, you know, and regions and some of all of that. Well, brains must be seated in rubber to discard um, the issue of um, tribe and religion in our Nigerian politics of today. Uh, it will be too early. You see, they say when trees fall on trees, the topmost is best removed. It's a gradual process. The moon moves slowly, but by day, it has crossed the sky. Don't be in a hurry. Because we already have that sentiment. And it's quite, it, it is institutionalized. And it is in recognition of that fact that you have the federal character. Because Nigeria is made up of different uh, 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 nations, so to speak. So, and it, it, it is so bad that even when our leaders are talking, they talk in line with that. My, the Islam, the, the Muslim, the Christian, the North, the South, the East, the injustice we are talking about today are planned on these very issues. So you can't wish them away. You just can't wish them away. So you have to take into consideration, unless you are not a serious political party, you have to take into consideration. And you find out that that is why in the end, before the APC comes up with this convention, it waits for it, it carries a while for the PD, PDP to come up with the convention. Now, this same mega party, I think that will be formed on the 1st of October or thereabout, will also follow suit. Because if you don't take into consideration this sensitive issue, then you will make it a very big mistake. A very big mistake. It has come for now, and I believe in the next 10 years, it will be the practice. It will be the plan. It's a gradual process. But you cannot completely be wish it away. Because even in America, you have the, what you call, why do you have the electoral college? The electoral college is to take care of the smaller states that ordinarily would have been considered because of their population. That's why you also have the electoral college. So every democracy in every country has its nuances which you must take, take, take into consideration in uh, uh, the practice of the politics. So I don't think uh, that is a problem. I don't think that is a problem. Though we almost got away from it during the uh, Adiola um, PDB election. Both Muslims, when Nigerians voted for them because of the credibility of Adiola, mm. Nigerians didn't bother. So it's a gradual process. After that, the situation got better. Because of the bad leadership we had that accentuated religion and uh, religion. So it's a gradual process. It's a gradual okay. process. If we have somebody that is credible enough, I believe if we have somebody that is credible enough, that most Nigerians believe in, it will eventually hmm. change. Okay. But it cannot be so easy. It cannot be so rapid. It's a gradual process. Okay. And we must take those two issues into consideration in our politics. Interesting. Mr. Ikpunabo Inkotaria, former special advisor to the River State Governor, we thank you very much for coming on the show today to talk about the Rescue Nigeria Party and how much of a formidable thought force it might be in its 2023 elections. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, next, uh, we're going to be speaking with uh, Maxwell Adeleye, who is uh, Director of uh, Public, uh, Public Communications for NINAS, uh, who, of course, I have continuously spoken about a rally at the United Nations uh, to push for, um, um, you know, um, what's the word now? They, uh, they basically say they want a referendum. referendum they want the constitution to be amended and all of that, yeah. yes. All right, so we, we, he's going to be joining us after the short break uh, here on The Breakfast. Good morning. <laughs>